In this presentation, we will review the reports we have so far, review the balance sheet and profit and loss after the first month of data input, but before the first bank reconciliation within QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Recall up to this point, we have taken this bank statement and we've entered this data. We've entered all the deposits and all the checks into the system. And now the next step is to do the bank reconciliation. But we also have these open items. So we've got these open items here that we're going to ask about. And we're going to need to recategorize those. And then we're going to need to do the bank reconciliation. I'm going to minimize this. Note that if we missed anything here, if we miss input, say a check number or an amount, then it's okay because we should be able to find that on the bank reconciliation. The bank reconciliation is not as powerful as it would be if we were to enter this into the system separately, meaning enter the checks as we go and then do the bank reconciliation. But the bank reconciliation is still something necessary and something we should do because if nothing else, it will stop us from having a miss key and entering this data incorrectly. In other words, this data and this system should mirror the bank reconciliation exactly, however, in terms of what's in the bank account because we entered it directly from the bank account. So it's really checking against us making a miss key as opposed to if we were going through the system and entering data separately, then we would have some disparities between our books and the banks just because of timing differences, just because of checks we've written that have not cleared the bank yet. We'll discuss that a little bit more as we do the bank reconciliations. But before that, let's take a look at what we have so far in terms of the reports. So we go back to our financials. Like We're going to look at the main reports we always look at, that being the balance sheet, the income statement, the financial statements, or the balance sheet and the profit and loss, as called in QuickBooks. So let's go to the reports drop-down. To do that, we're going to go to the financial statements. We're going to first go to the balance sheets, what I typically start off with. And within the balance sheet, we're going to change the dates. I like to do it up here so that we can change the range of dates as opposed to just this date so that when we drill down on the data, we can see more information rather than just one date. So we're going to go to Customize Reports. We're going to change, change the date range from 010119 to 123119. That's January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2019. And say OK. And this is what we have so far. All we have is the checking account. And that's basically what we want. We shouldn't have too much other activity on the the balance sheet because we're on a cash basis so we, we'll see that as we go through some of these open items we'll add a few more things there we're going to add a bit more complication than that but note that we, we're not going to have things like accounts receivable or accounts payable or accrued this and accrued that because we're just on a cash basis so basically we have the cash that we have and then we've got the rest being equity it's a sole proprietor and therefore owed to the owner all we have then is equity on the other side of things the detail of the equity being broken out on the income statement or profit and loss now again it's, it's not going to be quite that simple because even on a cash basis as we go through some of these open items we'll note that there's going to be some things that we don't do on a cash basis meaning like equipment if we bought a forklift or something we don't even if we paid twenty thousand cash for a forklift and we paid all cash we don't typically put it on the books as an expense at the time of purchase, although we should under a cash basis method. Even, even under a cash basis, we're going to put that on the books as an asset and, and basically you know, violate or move away from a cash basis. And we'll see an example of that. Uh, some other, the credit card is another thing that we may want to think about how we're going to deal with that because we, we, although we paid cash, we might owe more on a credit card or a loan that we have. We might have we might want to record the loan on the books that we have uh, rather than just the payments on the loan so those are going to be some items we'll talk about and we'll see some more details as we go through our open items but the goal here on a cash basis is to simplify things and notice right now it's very simple here's here's what the cash has is and here's what the equity is in the business it'll get more complicated again a little bit as we go and then we're going to go to the profit and loss or income statement, see the detail of this equity. So we're going to go to the reports up top. We're going to go to the company and financial profit and loss. We're going to change the dates from 010119 to 123119. Here's our information. 
Now note that if you're, talking, if you're dealing with a sole proprietor, uh, then you, they might be doing this in large part to see performance and to see uh, what their taxes at the end to help, to help have some documentation to do year end information which could include taxes. The balance sheet often isn't necessary for a sole proprietor to do taxes. We want the balance sheet and we want to reconcile because if we don't do those things, the assurance of the income statement being correct is very low. So a lot of people do their taxes with probably data that's completely not, I have no confidence in it being correct at all. So if we can, if we can enter this data in and reconcile, be confident of our banking account, then at least we have some assurance, a lot more than a lot of people do, about the income statement, the profit and loss this statement, that's usually what is provided to a tax preparer in order to enter the information into the tax return. So notice the balance sheet, the balance sheet is almost our check figure. It's our, it's our double entry check figure for a small company to make sure that the, the income statement we're using, the, the statement we're using, the financial statement we actually use for things like tax preparation, the profit and loss, is correct because we have that balancing system. So this this is going to be the statement that really is possibly what, what we're looking for mainly uh, if it's just for, for informational purposes for year-end kind of data. Now here is the detail of what's happening over the time period, performance data. So we've got the sales and then we've got this uncategorized income. And that of course is something we're going to have to deal with. We put it into uncategorized intentionally because that cannot be there after we finalized it. We can't have anything called uncategorized income. This is there intentionally for us to go back in and see it. Now the great thing about QuickBooks is that you can just double click on this item to zoom into it and see what's in there. Here's the date range, here's what's in there. And then we can go back into these one by one as we go through our open items and reallocate them as needed. So we're depending on QuickBooks flexibility, the ability for QuickBooks to be able to just change anything we want being careful <laughs> when we do so, doing it systematically, but being able to go back in here and say, yeah, I plan to go back in here, double click on this item. I don't go back to the register. I could find it in the register, but I could just change it here. This deposit means that it, that it went into the bank and the other side is going into uncategorized income. This is the account we're probably gonna change once we decide what this deposit actually is. So that's what we're gonna plan on doing. I'm gonna close this back out. We'll do the same thing here. It'll look much the same. Closing this back out. And then we have all of our expenses. If we double click on any expense, we'll see the detail. Double clicking on the detail, it'll give us a check. Not going back to the check register again. So we got to get used to kind of the, even when we enter the data all into the check register, we got to get used to the forms that QuickBooks is going to use. On a cash basis, typically it'll be a deposit form and a check form. So these, these checks are really what's being produced when you go to the register. And to see that, let's, let's go to the register, go to the reports up top, company and financial. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> let's go to banking up top and go to use register. And then we'll, we'll, it opens straight to the register because I had a check open. If it didn't open to the register, open the check register. And you'll note that these little items down here will indicate that these are being seen by QuickBooks as checks. This is being seen by QuickBooks as a deposit. So if you double click on these little items here, like that little CHK, it'll open what QuickBooks generated, the form it generated, the check. And so if I close that back out, if you double click on this little item here, that's what the register shorthand creating. This, this is a shorthand register for a deposit form. If we double click, here's a deposit form. So QuickBooks sees this as the full form document that's going to be generated when we enter this data directly into the shortened register. So let's go back to the transaction detail. I'm going to close that back out. Go back to the trial balance or to the balance, uh, the profit and loss. And so that's this information. Now all you can see it groups all of our category just as we would need it. If we were to fill out say a tax return or something like that or most financial data we would need revenue minus expenses. That's all we need, revenue minus expenses. And then we've got the uncategorized expenses, very large because some of those uncategorized expenses are probably not expenses, meaning if we double click on this item, we've got these big items here. You know, This one was going to uh, an insurance company. 
probably not one month of insurance if it's $12,000. So then we've got this one going to Vanguard Investments, probably not an expense. And again, these are the areas that we're probably going to veer away from a cash basis. We have to put these into the system because we need them to reconcile the, the checking account. I have to put them in there or else I'm not going to be able to reconcile the checking account. But they probably don't belong on the income statement, meaning we're going to have to put some items on the balance sheet. So these are the problem items we're going to have to go back in there and deal with. And, uh, and some of these expenses, like, again, a hot air balloon ride might be personal. That's why it's in there. So all of these, we're going to go back in there, and we're, we're dealing with the flexibility. We want these to be zero. This whole thing has to be zero at the end of the day. But I'm going to keep them there until we answer the question and then decide where we want to put them, depending on the flexibility of QuickBooks, to easily then go back in here, just double-click on the item that we need, change not the item being a check. Being a check means it's going to decrease the uh, checking account, which is what we want, of course. But the other side, the expense account in this case, which we might have to put as an asset account or some other type of account uh, other than an expense, depending on what we decide with our open items. So we're going to close this back out. That's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to end up finding a home for all these. But before we do that, I'm going to just keep pushing forward. It's quite possible we have a client that gave us multiple months worth of information. And maybe we want to go through a few months and, and just keep pushing forward and enter that data as much as we can. And by doing this system, we've entered the data into the, into the system. The, all the stuff is correct in terms of the cash account. It's just where the other side is going to go that we're not sure with. And we need to go through these two accounts and recategorize them. But as far as the actual cash account, the data that has been entered is correct. And we can go, go ahead and actually reconcile based on this information and, and, and move forward. So that's what we're going to do next time. We'll do the bank reconciliation for the first month. And then we'll just move right on to the, to the second month and keep pushing forward and then ask about these questions. Reallocate these items when necessary. Once done, we'll see that net income should probably change substantially. Uh, after we've reallocated those items. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.